Hey, everybody. My name is Jim Farmer. I'm the festival director of Out on Film. Thanks for joining us today. This is our 34th year of presenting stories for, by, and about our community and its allies. This is our first hybrid festival, meaning we have a limited schedule in theater. And we also have a very robust schedule virtual as well. This particular program, Documentary Shorts, it, it is, is a very, very strong program. I, I'm, I'm so fortunate to have all these films in the program and to have some of the filmmakers today to talk to us. So I'm gonna go around the Zoom room, let everybody introduce themselves and we'll have some questions. Why don't we start with Adam? Uh, hi, my name is Adam Barron and I directed Trade Center. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Whitney. Hi everyone, my name is Whitney Scoggi. I am the director and editor of the short film, The Beauty President. Thank you. And Anna. My name's Anna Cooperberg, and my film is 11 Weeks. Okay. Thank you all again. These are all just beautiful films. I, I feel very fortunate to have all of those in our in our programming this year. So we'll, we'll start with it. We'll go back to Adam again. But if you could just, you know, most of the people who are watching this will have already seen your film, but occasionally we'll have some people who might watch this first to whet their appetite for the program. If we could just go around and just talk a little bit about about your film, um, when you made it, how long it took, basics like that. We'll start with that. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so my film is Trade Center and um, Trade Center is a short documentary about the secret history of the World Trade Center as a cruising location, uh, which it was for um, many, many years, decades, up until 9-11. Uh, and uh, we shot the film uh, luckily in, um, uh, early March 2020, right before everything shut down from COVID. So it was really a project that I was working on all through the first year of the pandemic. Um, most of the, uh, luckily, because we shot right before, we were able to um, uh, pull in a lot of uh, voice and audio elements uh, when we couldn't do things in person with um, some of our subjects. And uh, it's been a it's been a, a project that I think um, COVID has really informed because it's about spaces where people met in person for uh, hookups and other kinds of socializing and um, uh, what happens when those spaces are no longer in existence. Okay, thank you, Whitney. Uh, yeah, so The Beauty President is about Terrence Allen Smith, who in 1992 ran for president under his drag queen persona, Joan Jett Black. So the film is about America's first drag queen for president. Um, and within that, it's a story about representation. It's a story about visibility. Uh, Terrence did this campaign at the height of the AIDS pandemic. Um, and so obviously there was a lot of parallels when we were making the film because we made the film during the pandemic. We shot um, in the summer of 2020 under a very strict uh, protocol. Um, and then I edited throughout the, the pandemic. But I think, you know, during the interview, it was very interesting because Terrence was making these correlations between, you know, the fact that he had already gone through this. And I think the film itself um, reminds us that, you know, the people that we've lost aren't that far away from us. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see that as things go on with this current pandemic. Um, but the film is really about championing someone that um, was forgot by history and giving him a platform. And I just really wanted to be a part of preserving his story. Thank you. Anna. So my film, 11 Weeks, is about my wife, Carla's cancer diagnosis and death. And we, so we had 11 weeks from the time she was diagnosed to the time she died. And I am, I'm a photographer. This is my first film. So it's very intimate. It's very visually driven. And my editor, Julie Kasky, who's not here, I, um, She's really the co-director because she made it come together as a film. And she's also the one who said, um, you know, I thought it was gonna be a film about her and her approach to death, but it's really a love story. It's about, I'm in the film. It's about both of us and our, our conversations. It's, it's a beautiful piece. I and mean, all of these films are just, just beautiful. Thank you again. Um, 
I, I want to ask you all as documentary filmmakers, how you normally go about finding the subjects for your work. I mean, obviously here we have something that's obviously very personal for you, Anna, but, but why don't we start with you? Can you, I mean, can you talk about the decision to do something, a documentary that is just so personal for you? Yeah, well, you know, as a photographer, it's just my nature to mm -hmm. photograph and video like everything that's going on in my life. And when Carla was diagnosed, she turned to me and said, are you going to document this? And I was like, well, yeah, if you, do you want me to? And she's like, yeah. And I'm, and I said, well, it's not going to be pretty. It's, you know, it's going to be really real. And she said, yeah, it's important. But I think she thought I was going to be taking stills. And at first I did. That's what I was doing. And then we were, you know, we would be having conversations and I would just get the iPhone out and like kind of selfie style video us talking to each other. Um, and then I just started doing that more and more and then realized like, you know, I need to video this and it's going to um, take some kind of shape that will have, um, you know, that'll have a broader audience. Um, and she's just very trusting and, you know, real, as you can tell in the movie. So there's a point, you know, when we're shooting and I'm, I don't know how, you know, like what the final thing is gonna look like. I just felt that it was important to document. Okay, all right, thank you. Whitney, how do you go about finding your themes, your, your, your subjects? Yeah, well, I think for me, it just comes back to representation and visibility. I think as a queer person, as a Black person, I'm drawn to telling stories from my community. I feel a really intense responsibility as a documentary filmmaker to use that tool to help push the needle of representation as far as it can get. And so when I'm thinking about, you know, what types of films do I wanna make and who do I wanna, who do I wanna tell films about? It's always gonna be people from the margins and it's always gonna be people that are underrepresented because I think the power of film is that it acts as a catalyst of representation, of visibility. And then through those mechanisms, you start to have conversations and you start to change society and you start to change the needle. And I think that, you know, that can sound like kind of a, a grandiose statement, but I think it's really true when you break it down. Um, and so for me, finding Terrence was such a magical moment because it was the intersection of all the things that I cared about and in one person. And it was just like, wow, like this is really special and I really want to be a part of this. Okay, thank you. And Adam. Yeah, I think, um... Uh, you know, I, I, uh, someone who was really focused on narrative for many years and, and a number of shorts, and I think my sh narrative shorts have played here before and, um, and they're very different, but they're also what they, what they have in them that, uh, carries through to my film, to trade center and the films that I'm making now is they're really about history, um, history and sexuality as they relate to, to gay, uh, and queer men. Um, I, I, I am really sort of follow my obsessions. I'm very, you know, uh, sex positive. I, I am really thinking all the time about, um, sexual interactions and, and what kind of, uh, uh, circumstances foster different sexual interactions. And so like for trade center, the, the project was really something that I thought about for 10 years and was just always obsessed with this idea of like, what if there were, you know, what if there were people who were cruising in the World Trade Center when the planes hit during 9-11 and um, which is a controversial kind of concept for some people, but I thought it was really, um, uh, what it was really interesting was to sort of show how spaces foster community and um, what's lost when they're taken away. And that's um, something of the the series that I'm doing now, which is, is um, what I look for in subjects is I'm actually looking to talk to elders and people who have stories about places or things that don't exist anymore, mm -hmm. because I feel like nobody or not and nobody, but some people are, but uh, as a filmmaker, I'm not seeing many people doing stories about that. And so I feel like that's something where, you know, 
it's a subject that I'm really interested in and obsessed with. And so as a filmmaker, I just want to follow my obsessions and have conversations with those people. And it's great also to talk to elders about sex and sexuality and things that they may not have shared in a public uh, way with other people. Okay, thank you. The next question is how important is the film festival circuit for you all and and how have you navigated the last year in terms of getting your films out and being seen? I'll start with you, Whitney. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been crucial going back to this concept of community. Um, I think that um, film festivals, although they, you know, had to pivot and, you know, kudos to all of you for the pivot. Um, I think that it's been, it's just about community and wherever you can find that community. And for, for us with the Beauty President, um, we've been able to have um, a very robust festival run and that has set us up to be able to share the story with our community, but with people outside of our community. And so I think that the film festivals are still such a great avenue to meet people where they are, but also to meet people beyond what they might typically watch. I think people that go to film festivals are interested in exploring and learning and being challenged. And that's, I think, as filmmakers, that's that's what we're trying to do to the audience. So I think film festivals are still such an important avenue to get your film to audiences. Okay. Adam. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, it's, what's interesting for me this year uh, in thinking about festivals is um, that the film that I made is... Um, really explicit in subject matter, although nothing is seen on screen. And um, it's a, a subject that's potentially, you know, I, I anticipated a lot more controversy surrounding the film than I uh, than the film ended up getting, which was great. Um, and and what I had experienced this year was which I'd never experienced is uh, as a gay filmmaker making films for gay audiences is that this film kind of had a crossover where um, you know Whitney and I both screened at South by Southwest and um, I have gone on to screen at um, a number of uh, festivals that are you know non gay uh, queer specific and um, the audiences are actually really interested in this film and this subject which has um, you know, in, in concert with a film that I produced for, for Netflix called Circus of Books a few years ago. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, it sort of says to me that, that I'm on the right path in terms of um, that there is an audience that is interested in this subject and it isn't just uh, the, the LGBT festival audience. Um, so for me, it's, um, it's been interesting to have this kind of crossover success, as they say, and um, uh, and I'm interested in seeing where it goes. Thanks, Anna. Well, I think the great thing about film festivals is the you foster a sense of community, and the even like us here meeting like this, we wouldn't have met otherwise, and. Um, it seems like, um, you know, it's weird because it's, this is all virtual, <laughs> you know, because of the pandemic, but um, it's a way to, you're kind of a curator, you know, it's a way for people who love film to um, like really get together and see something special that they wouldn't have otherwise even known about. Okay. I, I've, I've spoken to, some filmmakers who, when they make a short film, say, I'm making this with an eye on a longer version later. And I talk to other filmmakers who say, I'm making a short film and I know that it's only a nine minute feature and that's really all that I, but that's all the story needs. How, what is your approach? I mean, do you, I mean, when you make films, do you, do you think that way or what are your thoughts? We'll start with, uh, we'll start with Whitney. Yeah, for me, um, I wanted to tell a really contained story because the most important thing for me was that people took Terrence seriously. I didn't want it to be a film about um, this. I, I didn't want people to misunderstand what it was actually about. I didn't want the fact that he was doing drag to be the most important part of the story. To me, the most important part of the story was the progressive values that he was championing and the fact that he was doing this for his community. And so I really was focusing on okay, well, how do I do that? And I can't, I'm not going to tell 
his entire story because I wanted to be focused on the campaign and I wanted to be focused on this moment that I felt was so special. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, you know, people have asked if I wanted to make it longer. People have asked if I plan on making it longer. People have asked me to make it longer. Um, but for right now, I'm, I'm really happy with what the film is and what it stands for. And that was my intention. And so, um, you know, I, I really try to champion short form as a form. Okay. as something that can stand in its own two feet and doesn't need to be modified. Sure. Anna. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. And I, actually, some I think it's harder to make something short. Mm -hmm. In fact, my biggest complaint about most documentaries is that they're not edited tight enough. It's, you know, people fall in love with the footage and they want to throw it all in. So, and, you know, not that I've ever, you know, this is my first film, but like just as a viewer, that's what I feel often and um, I love New York Times op docs when something's super tight and short and powerful. Uh, I, I love that. Adam. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have the same thing with Whitney where, you know, my, my, a, a lot of people, you know, will comment or write like, I want longer, I want the feature, I want, you know, and um, for me, I was really um, uh, thinking about shorts in uh, a really positive, you know, generative way as something that can give people a, a history lesson in a really brief and short, impactful, uh, you know, amount of time. I was also thinking about the pandemic in the sense that it was hard for me during the first three or four months to watch things that were long, that were really involved or had lots of highs and lows in terms of, you know, um, drama and story arc. And, and I was really much more able to take in shorts and short form content and things that had a more experimental edge. And so that was kind of the mode that I, that I was working in. Although right now I'm working on a project that's much longer and, uh, it's not, it's still a short, but it's a short that I know has a, a, a much uh, longer covers a much longer period of time and and much more many more subjects and places to go so I'm sort of conceiving it as half hour short you know which I know <laughs> festivals ball cap but I'm still going for it great okay one more quick question what's next for your film and what's next for you your your upcoming projects we'll start with Anna so it's still going around the film festival circuit. It's going to play, I, I live in San Francisco. So here we have the Mill Valley Film Festival. So that's next. And um, after that, I don't know. Okay. We'll see. Great. Adam. Uh, yeah, so the film is both going around the festival circuit and it's also on Vimeo uh, right now. And it's also uh, on Here TV. I'm starting to license it places. Um, I, um, I really was kind of, you know, looking at the window of uh, things uh, tightening and shortening in terms of not doing a whole year long festival thing. I also really thought it was important to put the film out um, uh, to kind of coincide with the 20th anniversary of 9-11, which happened earlier this month, because I, I, you know, want the film to be part of that conversation that people are having about reflecting on the history of, of, uh, of that tragedy and, you know, what the film that I made reveals about that tragedy. Um, but it's still going to festivals and I'm, you know, seeing, uh, uh, I'm getting feedback from all different corners and press and all sorts of things. So um, yeah, just, uh, uh, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great uh, experience. Great, and Whitney? Uh, yeah, still doing the film festival circuit. And then we are working on figuring out our online release. Um, that is our ultimate plan with the film is to get it up um, so everyone can see it wide. Great. The program is Documentary Shorts. It is an extremely very, very great program this year. Thank you to our filmmakers, Anna, Whitney, and Adam for sharing their films with us and also for taking the time to talk to us today. You have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.